All right, so now we're going to uh, see it's like an easier way of checking a stability, all right? Um, so checking a stability. Um, so the first observation, right, is that uh, you don't really have to check every single point in the left half plane, right? So the observation is that uh, it's not necessary to check every point. Uh, Z in the left half plane, okay, uh, to um, to verify a stability. And um, I should say that a stability function uh, which satisfies this condition is what is uh, sometimes referred to as A-acceptable, right? So a stability function R that satisfies the condition which is the set of z in a complex plane such that the modulus of r z is less than 1, right? So this is, of course, just the, the um, stability uh, region, right? So if this stability region contains uh, sort of c negative, right, the left half complex plane, uh, then we say that this r function is A acceptable. So that's just, uh, I should say that's maybe a bit of notation. Anyway, so let me sort of uh, state the following lemma, um, which is uh, sort of a simplification of the method we used. It's like to check uh, uh, A acceptability, it's like of uh, stability functions, okay? So, uh, so let uh, R be an arbitrary rational function. That is not constant. Okay. Then the claim is that uh, the modulus of R, okay, is less than one for all z in the left half plane, if and only if the poles. of R have positive real parts. Okay, and uh, sort of R I times T, right? The modulus of R I times T is less than equal to one for all T in the rails. Okay, so what is this condition basically saying, right? So this condition is more or less saying that uh, you want all the the sort of the roots of the denominator, it's like of this rational function, to have positive real parts. So what that means basically is that the um, this rational function um, doesn't become singular, right, uh, on the closure of the uh, left half plane. Okay, so that includes uh, the um, imaginary axis, if you will. Okay, and then on the boundary, it's like of this uh, left half plane, which is again this imaginary axis, right? The modulus of the function is less than or equal to one. Okay, so that's more or less the condition. Uh, and if you, you know something about complex analysis, then you, you might expect that this has some sort of flavor of saying that, well, we need that the um, this rational function R be analytic. It's like in the uh, closure of the 
of some domain, it's like, and uh, then you want a condition, it's like on its modulus. So that again sounds like a, some sort of maximum principle type argument. Okay, so let's just see it's like how you go about proving this. So proof. Okay, so this is uh, an if and only if, so the implication goes both ways. Okay, so let's uh, look at one direction, which is that, uh, um, all right, so the one direction is that if uh, R of Z, the modulus of R of Z is less than one for all Z in the left half plane, right, then uh, by continuity, it has to be that uh, the modulus of R of Z is less than equal to one for all Z in the closure of that left half plane, okay? And in particular, right, That means that uh, that you can't have poles in the closed left half plane. Okay, because if it, you had a pole, it's like then its modulus at that point would sort of diverge, right? Uh, or as you approach that point, it would diverge. Uh, and it has so to, so, so to be that the, again, the modulus along the boundary, right, which is the, um, the imaginary axis is less than e equal to one for all t in the rails. Okay, so that one direction is relatively straightforward. Okay, so you kind of poles in the closed left half plane, which means that all the poles have to be uh, has their real uh, parts, which are positive, right? So that's the, the forward direction. So let's see what happens uh, in the converse direction. Okay. So conversely, right? If all the poles reside to the right of uh, sort of the imaginary axis, which I call I times R, right? Then what that means is that R is uh, analytic, sorry, R, then the uh, rational function R is analytic, <coughs> analytic, sorry, in the closure of the left half plane, okay, which is of course a closed set, okay. Um, so basically by the maximum principle, right, since it's not constant, uh, and uh, by the maximum principle, Attains its maximum along the boundary. Okay. Um, all right. And um, so that means that the, um, okay, so what that means is that if uh, the modulus of uh, R, it's like along the boundary, which is this uh, imaginary axis, is less than equal to one for all T in the rails, right? Uh, this implies that, uh, the interior uh, 
that the modulus of r is strictly less than one. Okay, uh, and, and this this implication is exactly where we use the fact that it is uh, not constant, right? So if it was constant, right, then there's, there was obviously a possibility that it would um, satisfy this condition. It's like with the inequality, but with the possibility of equality to one. Um, but um, again, if it was constant, then um, it would attain its maximum. It's like on the boundary. It's like, but there would be uh, something. It's like which was, uh, you know, it would have the same modulus. It's like in the interior, right? But if it was non-constant, it's like then the maximum principle says that you know that's the uh, that's the only place that it can attain its uh, maximum value. And so it means that in the interior, it's like the modulus has to be smaller. Okay, um, and and that's exactly um, what you need, which is to say that uh, the modulus of this function is less than one uh, in the sort of left half plane, right? Okay, so in the interior, and the interior is really just, uh, again, this left half plane. Okay, so, uh, so that sort of proves it's like what you need, it's like in both directions. Um, and, and let's just see how you can apply this. It's uh, idea, it's like to analyze the a-stability of, uh, of a runge kutta method, okay? All right. Okay, so, all right. Um, so let's look at this uh, same stability function we saw before, right? So let's look at an example. You have a stability function R Z is uh, one plus one thirds Z over one minus two thirds Z plus one six Z squared. And we saw how you could do, it's like the stability analysis by looking at uh, R is equal to rho E to the I theta, okay? Um, where rho is positive, and then theta, it's like was in some sort of interval, it's like uh, of length uh, two pi, right? Uh, so now it's like what we're going to do instead is we're going to check uh, what, are, what the roots of the denominator are, all right? So, uh, so you look at the roots of uh, one minus two thirds z plus one six z squared, and you can check that uh, the poles basically. So this means that the poles of this, right, are at uh, two plus minus uh, i root two. Okay, so you can check that. Uh, so that means the poles are in the, um, you know, they're not in the closure of the left half plane. So that's the condition you want to check is that. You know, all the poles have uh, real, uh, positive real parts, right? So they both have positive real parts. So that's one of the conditions you need to check. And then the other condition you need to check for a stability is that R just evaluated on I times T, where now T is a real number, right? You want the modulus of this to be less than equal to one. Okay, so we need to check that. Okay. All right, so that's a little bit easier. Um, so you get one plus one thirds uh, i of t squared, right, is less than equal to one minus two thirds uh, i t plus one six i t squared, right? Okay, and you square both sides, which is what we did before. And then uh, you can compute this, right? And again, you use the fact that, oops, that's one plus i t, so that's a modulus, right? So you again, it's like compute the modulus of complex number by multiplying it by its complex conjugate. So when you do that to this, for example, you just get one plus one ninth uh, t squared. Or well, the other thing you can do is that the modulus squared, of course, is the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So, um, so you get that, and then this is less than equal to or you want to check that this is less than or equal to one plus one ninth t squared plus one over 36 t to the four. Okay, uh, and then 
Um, so it's easy to check that this is true, right? So you can check this is true for all t in the reals. Okay, so um, this expression, of course, is a lot easier. It's just a polynomial. It's like it didn't involve. It's like these cosines which showed up in the other expression. So this is a much easier condition to check, right? So um, yeah, and so again, this is true for all t in the rails. It's like uh, all the poles are in the uh, have real um, sort of positive real parts. It's and so it's like by the lemma, it's like which we talked about. Um, this is uh, a acceptable basically, right? So so R is a acceptable. And R being a acceptable means that the Runge-Kutta methods, which have R as a stability function, are then a stable. Okay. Um, so yeah. All right. Um, okay. So so let's just stop here for a minute.